In a little more than 300 words, God sketched out the next 2,500 years of human history in Daniel's dream, from the time of Babylon to the end of the world's history in Daniel chapter 7. This captivating chapter houses the prophecy of the little horn, a symbol of immense significance in biblical interpretation. It's a symbol that has sparked countless debates and theories, yet its true identity remains shrouded in mystery for many. In this video, we'll follow the breadcrumbs to uncover the truth about the little horn. We'll explore ways to recognize this enigmatic figure, drawing upon the words of the Bible and the archives of history. We'll probe into the rise, reign and fall of the little horn, shedding light on its role in the Roman Inquisition and the change of God's law. So buckle up as we journey through these biblical and historical revelations. Let's dive into the emergence of this little horn. The ten-horned beast, a symbol of the Roman Empire, splintered into ten kingdoms. Suddenly, a new player enters the scene, a little horn that uproots three of these kingdoms. This little horn is described as having eyes like the eyes of man and speaking great things. The historical record holds the key to deciphering this symbol. As the Roman Empire crumbled in the year 476 after the birth of Christ, a struggle for dominance ensued. Three notable tribes, the Heruli, Vandals and Ostrogoths, found themselves in a power struggle with the Bishop of Rome and the emperors loyal to the Catholic Church. In a strategic play, Emperor Zeno persuaded the Ostrogoths to invade the Heruli, resulting in their downfall in the year 493. The Vandals were next, conquered by Emperor Justinian's general, Belisarius, in the year 534. The Ostrogoths, who had been used as pawns earlier, were driven out of Rome by the same general Belisarius in the year 538. In the year 533, Justinian decreed that the Bishop of Rome was to have supreme authority over all the churches. However, this decree held no weight until the three Aryan tribes, the Heruli, Vandals and Ostrogoths, were overthrown. These tribes represent the three horns of Daniel chapter 7. By the year 538, the Catholic emperors had successfully overthrown these tribes and the little horn rose to power. This marked the beginning of an era of dominance for the papacy, which would continue to hold absolute power for another 1260 years till the year 1798. This 1260 year period is referenced multiple times in biblical prophecy. You can see it in Daniel chapters 7 and 12 and Revelation chapters 11 and 12. This marked the beginning of the era of the little horn's power. The reign of the little horn is a significant period in biblical history. As we investigate the scriptures, it becomes evident that the little horn, as depicted in the book of Daniel, wasn't a fleeting power. Quite the contrary, it held sway for a substantial length of time, specifically 1,260 years. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25, introduces us to this time frame. It mentions a power that would speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws for a time and times and the dividing of time. This cryptic phrase, a time and times and the dividing of time, is understood to represent three and a half years, or according to the Jewish calendar, 1,260 days. Now, the prophetic language of the Bible equates a day to a year. So, this three and a half times, or 1,260 days, symbolically translates to a reign of 1,260 years. This interpretation is further supported by multiple references in the book of Revelation, namely Revelation 11 verses 2 and 3, Revelation 12 verses 6 and 14, and Revelation 13 verse 5. Each of these verses echoes the same length of time, reinforcing the duration of the little horn's rule. During this extensive reign, the little horn was not a benign entity. It wielded immense power, sought to alter divine laws and times, and persecuted the saints. Its influence permeated every facet of society, shaping the course of history and leaving an indelible mark on the world. The reign of the little horn was not just a historical period, it was an epoch of prophetic significance. It was a time when a power dared to challenge the Most High, a time when saints were tested and refined, and a time when divine laws were tampered with. The reign of the little horn was indeed a time of great power and influence. The Roman Inquisition is a significant event linked to the reign of the little horn. As we venture into this dark chapter of history, we must first understand the context. The Roman Inquisition established in the 16th century was a system of tribunals developed by the Holy See. 
Its primary purpose was to combat heresy, but it also played a pivotal role in the consolidation of papal authority. This period saw the Church exerting its power to quell any dissent or deviation from its doctrines. It was a time of great turmoil and fear, as the Church's authority was absolute and its reach extensive. Those who dared to question or defy the established beliefs found themselves facing the wrath of the Inquisition. Trials were held, often based on suspicion or hearsay, and the accused were subjected to severe and merciless punishments. This was the height of the Little Horn's power, a time when its influence was felt most acutely. The Roman Inquisition was not just about maintaining religious orthodoxy, it was also a tool for political manipulation. The Church used it to suppress opposition and to consolidate its power over the kingdoms of Europe. The tribunals of the Inquisition became a platform for the Little Horn to exercise its authority, demonstrating its ability to control and dictate the course of events. This period in history provides a clear illustration of the Little Horn's dominance as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7. The Church, under the guise of preserving faith and order, wielded its power to suppress, control and instill fear. The Roman Inquisition serves as a grim reminder of this power and the lengths to which the Little Horn went to maintain its authority. In the broader context, the Roman Inquisition was a manifestation of the Little Horn's reign. It was a time of unparalleled authority for the Church, marked by fear, suppression and control. This era of religious and political dominance aligns with the prophecies of Daniel, further solidifying the identity of the Little Horn. To ingrain its power and influence even deeper, the Little Horn would claim to be able to forgive sin, an attribute ascribed to only God himself. The change of God's law is another crucial point in identifying the Little Horn. It's here that we peek into the sphere of the Catechism, a summation of the principles of the Christian religion, often in question and answer format. The Little Horn, as we have identified, is the Papal Rome, and it's within the Church's Catechism that we see a pivotal shift in God's law. The Ten Commandments, as dictated in the Bible, form the cornerstone of Christian faith. Yet, in the Catechism of the Roman Catholic Church, these commandments have been altered. The second commandment, which forbids the worship of graven images, is omitted. And the tenth commandment, forbidding covetousness, is split into two to maintain the count of ten. Why is this significant? Because it underscores the power and audacity of the little horn. The Papal Rome, in changing the very laws dictated by God, showcases the great things that the little horn speaks of in Daniel chapter 7. It's a bold move, a statement of power and control, and a clear indication of the Little Horn's influence. But the change in God's law goes deeper than just the commandments. The Catechism also altered the Sabbath, moving it from the seventh day of the week, Saturday, to the first day, Sunday. This shift is not just a change in schedule, but a deviation from a sacred tradition, a tradition that was set in motion at the creation of the world. This change of law in the Catechism is not a mere footnote in history. It's a glaring signpost pointing to the identity of the Little Horn. It's a testament to the power and influence that the Papal Rome held and continues to hold over the Christian faith. The shift in God's law in the Catechism is a clear indicator of the Little Horn's influence. As we journey further into the history and prophecies of Daniel, we gain a deeper understanding of the Little Horn, its rise, reign and eventual fall. Every reign has an end, and so did the reign of the Little Horn. The Little Horn, after a powerful reign of 1260 years, met its decline. The year was 1798, a year of considerable significance. With the French Revolution stirring up Europe, the Little Horn's power began to crumble. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French general, seized Pope Pius VI, symbolizing the end of the Little Horn's reign. This momentous event was not just a political shift, but had deep spiritual implications. It signified the end of an era where the Little Horn could exert its influence unchallenged. Now the tides had turned and a new chapter was set to unfold. This event was no ordinary fall, it was a fulfillment of the prophecy to this point, a testament to the accuracy of the Divine Word. The deadly wound of the Little Horn marked a significant turning point in history,